and a woman, woman, woman in every way. He yeah, he yeah. I'm living my life, 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 living day by day. Yeah, yeah. Are you in every way, woman? I from Los Angeles. Here's every way, woman. I can't believe the number of people who are breaking bank to look like their favorite celebrities with plastic surgery. So I wanted to open the dialogue and check in with you guys about this. I'm sorry, I'm laughing because if I had the money, I would do it. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> you got a point well, we there. Know you know what she stands. Hold on. First of all, I'm 24, okay? The last thing I want to do is blow all my money on my face. Like, just to look like a celebrity. Look look. I'm 24 yeah, too, I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Even if but I there have... are 24 year olds and younger doing this so this yes. is what just floors me I don't understand why they would spend this money okay it's here we go you know me and that's why we have young women who have low self-esteem who look for love outside of themselves because they're spending money or they're trying to look like something that they are not and as a society, we have the tendency to perpetuate that. Mm -hmm. And as a mother of teenage daughters, I'm highly upset about it. But I, think, I think it depends on the type of celebrity that we focus on. Because a lot of times what we get upset about are the celebrities that are the Barbie doll look. Or the, you know, they ha they're the perfect look. But there are a lot of female celebrities out there that actually, as I also have younger kids, and I'm looking at them and who they idolize and who they're looking at, and I realize that there are more non-traditional celebrities out there now. Mm -hmm. It's true, yeah. but the fact of the matter yeah. is, I feel like anybody who wants to look like someone else who really can't find happiness to themselves, that, I feel like oh, you need yes. to go to okay, therapy. Sorry, hold on. And it's, Has anybody ever said to you that you remind them of someone? The famous. Well, you know, a few people. Uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, oh, I can't I can't name drop. Have anyone ever said to you, oh my gosh, you kind of look like so and so, or you remind me of so and so? Has anyone ever said that you but look like? Madison, but so I mean, I'm going to change I everything that. to make sure I look exactly like that person. I mean, I don't believe it, but people say that I, I've gotten Shakira a lot, mm -hmm. and honestly, even if I didn't look like Shakira, I'm going to be like, oh, I have all <laughs> of those all this money. Lie. I'm going to go Madison, blow it on my face. Now, honestly, it comes down to being low self-esteem, and it's ridiculous. Madison, I'm going to let you. <laughs> sit here and justify this by saying, oh my gosh, I look like Beyonce. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, again, I think that's the mindset that that we put, we subconsciously put into women. Exactly, saying, it's the society, it's yeah, the media. And we like, do that. So I, I don't they're know publicizing that. But we're that. focusing on the very small percent of Thank people, you. one, who do it, and two, who have the money to do but it. It's but it's really growing where people yes, who even don't growing. have I, I work in Beverly Hills, and that's where money's walking around all over the place. Mm -hmm. And girls that are my age are walking around like, Lips like this, duck face, and face like this. <laughs> and I'm like, can we can we just be happy with ourselves, well, maybe please? Maybe there's something that they're not happy about with because I mean, for me, it would be my forehead. If I could get Botox mm -hmm. and I had the money, I would. I mean, I'm just <laughs> being honest. If I had the money, it doesn't necessarily right. mean I'm trying to look. That, like but Shakira. that's your absolute <laughs> right. We all do that on a very small scale. Okay. How many of you get facials? I don't. It's one thing to look. It's one thing. It's one thing to do be the best and like maintain yourself. Correct. But when you really and there are people who really want to look like someone else, so they're going to change their nose. They're going to change Why? their teeth. Right. They're they going to change their jaw. Okay. Right. But, if they, we're, we're, but there's more people doing this. But we're talking about people who focus on wanting to be like a celebrity or look mm -hmm. like a celebrity. Correct. Right. Right. One of my look friends like that are my so, age, they all want to. They all look up to somebody. Beverly Hills Housewives, the Laguna Beach girls, are dyeing their hair. They're bleach blonding it. They're getting all of these why? injections why in their Felicia? face. Why, why because, are young women doing because that? Because I'm going to tell you why. They're insecure. Because either they were messed up by their last relationship and it just made them feel really bad about themselves. No, Felicia, they're, they're, they're messed insecurity. up because every yeah. magazine that they see and every cover that they have, it has a person who's who portrays wait, to be perfect. That. They but they're not really true. That's not, every way, that's not everyday women. It's not. But I, mean, I want to ask you, Anna, because you know you do transform people mm -hmm. with makeup. I mean, mm -hmm. it's not through plastic surgery, but you transform them through makeup. So, but do you find people who are confident who want that transformation? Let me tell or? you something. Because of the, you know, what I do, every person that sits in my chair has some type of insecurity. Yeah. You ladies cannot tell me that you are not insecure. Oh, I tell you. I'm insecure somebody. about something. But yes. I'm not paying twenty five dollars. Yes. <laughs> Like Twenty five like thousand. But if you have the money, no, no, no even if I didn't, uh, there are bit. there are better things to spend exactly. my money on. Exactly, like no. my college loans. Hello, but how exactly. Like, like, all right. Money well, there is so much more to talk about with this conversation. Uh, we're really heated, and next we're going to talk about. Do you look good for your age? <laughs> 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 so we'll be back with more on that.
<laughs> Look how beautiful you are. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Coming up next, more Everyway Woman. All right, whenever I'm looking through magazines and they have older women, they always say, she looks good for her age. What do you guys think about that? Do you think that's a compliment or not? That's the worst thing you can tell a woman. Because <laughs> <laughs> that makes me look very Makes you look like what? I, I think, I think any time anyone says you look good, it's a compliment. Yeah, that's I think what it's I a think. compliment. Because if I, when I'm in my 40s, 50s, and someone says, hey, you look good, I'm be like, all that no, no, comments no. that went into my face no, no, no. was good. Well, you're 24. No, no. Okay, being the mature one in this group, I would take offense. If someone told, I mean, okay, I do look good. Let's put the disclaimer. You do out. look good. Yeah, I would you be do. offended for if someone age. would say, you look good for your age. What is so that, that implying? So that somebody's 70? What would you want to hear? <laughs> but someone 70 can't look good? But what would you want to hear if it was a compliment? You, you look, look good. good. Just, what just, what you does look that have to be when they, they don't tell a man, you look, oh, you look good yeah, but for we, your age? Yeah. Yeah. That, that is true. I mean, we live in a society where age is a focus, especially when it comes to women. Exactly. But mm -hmm. honestly, I have a friend who she is in her 50s. She has four kids, is, is a grandmother. Mm -hmm. And when I look at her, yes, she looks great for her age. But when I look, I'm like, no, I'm sorry. She looks great no matter what. <laughs> she looks <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, when I look at her and I look at her age, it just doesn't. Com I I can't comprehend oh, that, that she yeah. looks what, that okay. good for her we'll age. It's right a there. huge compliment. What, what's the disconnect? Okay, so she has all those accomplishments. What what's the disconnect? Because you because age catches up with you. You have wrinkles. All this stuff does catch up with you. And when there are women out there who you know, when fifty is the new forty, and the forty is the new right. thirty. It's surprising that people can still, because my mom, um, she's one of those like, oh, at my age, I can't wear red lipstick. At my age, I can't do this and that okay, with my hair. So and I, I don't agree with that. Yeah, I don't either. Because, you know, I'm always saying, oh, I have to dress age appropriate. And our producer yeah. always rolls me up about that. <laughs> but there's a, there's a self-consciousness because I'm going, you know, I'm going to be 50 soon. And I don't think that I should look like I'm 14. I'm right. going to say this. Oh, so I, you got to go. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, no, I completely agree because I, I know there are ladies who are, are more mature in their 60s mm -hmm. and their 50s and they're the shopping at Forever 21. Right. right. And, and I don't like, like that. No, no, no. I hate that. Yeah, Every I time guess. I'm at Forever 21, I'm like, can you please, there's a Macy's down that way. Right. So there you go, right? Just age discrimination. I'm just saying, really, you're going to wear those pink shorts up your butt in front of your daughter that she wears? You guys are hitting a core with me, really, because I'm struggling with that. I have teenage daughters and you know, today I came in in that yellow dress and my daughters told me to pick up that yellow dress. I was appalled because I didn't feel that that was age appropriate for me mm. to wear a yellow dress. And my daughters are saying, you know, mom, you're, you're not 80. And yeah, so I'm thinking, what well, can exactly. I get? 80 or wear a yellow dress? I said, you know, have some liveliness to you. So I thank you for that because this really means something to me. You know what? For me. me though, I'm 24 and I know y'all are going to say I'm the youngest. I have nothing to worry about. But no, that's a lie because I wake up with bags under my eyes. And I know it's because of my stress and my work that I'm going through. But I'm constantly trying to find solutions to put like Olay and like just some type of treatment to help me prevent fine lines and wrinkles. Um, and I'm 24. Help Madison. I'm okay. 24. Okay. But I saw you. You got this one for us. Uh, you got this one because, you know, at some point, yeah, you, you have to start thinking about taking care of yourself. You're 24. 24. And the other day I was babysitting this kid and he was like, Felicia, you look older. <laughs> oh, stab well, that, in the heart. That's definitely there. I mean, we, we do have to maintain ourselves and, and make sure we're taking care of ourselves. But the fact of the matter is there are plenty of women who, as they get older, are taking care of themselves and they should be praised for that and they should be highlighted for that because there are a lot of women out there in middle True. America True. Who, who have just decided I'm too old for all of that and I don't need to I don't need to do all of that and mm -hmm. I say why not mm -hmm. well I, okay <laughs> Say it, Here's why not. <laughs> <laughs> Let me write this down. You know, at, at some point, yes, you do. I do kind of agree with with you when you, Stacy, when she says you have to be age appropriate. At some point, do you want to be sixty wearing twenty four year old clothes, running around with you? No, you don't. You don't. Um, if someone says to, if you, if you, when you don't take care of yourself really well, yeah, you're gonna eat. Correct. That, that that's is, that's, that's just the bottom line. But it's, and it's the, the thing is, is why we get so offended is because we get so wrapped up in our lives and we don't take care of ourselves. That we don't is take the, the time to take care of ourselves. That is the good point. And why yeah. do they put the age on women on magazines? Because those women, they have somebody on them all the time. And yes, they look great 
for their age because somebody is there on them helping them look great for their age. I just That's don't why think we that, get offended. I just don't think that women should have all these rules like, oh, I'm this age now, so I can't wear yellow. You can wear yellow because you look fantastic you in yellow. You don't have to me. All right, ladies. So, you know what? I, I do think we should take the compliments yes. that are yes. given to us. Yes. How about that? Exactly. We can agree on mm -hmm. that. And we'll be back with more Every Way Woman. Mm -hmm. Freedom. Every inch we're back with you. Coming up next, more Every Way Woman. Do you know the difference between breast reduction and breast augmentation? Neither do I, but stay tuned for the answer from Every Way Woman. Breast surgery is one of the most popular surgeries out there. Breast reduction, breast augmentation. And here we have Dr. West and Dr. Gown to tell us the difference between the two and also how some of the procedures are done. Uh, Dr. Gown, what is a breast reduction surgery? So those are bipolar opposites. The breast reduction surgery is when a woman comes in complaining about the overly large size of her breasts, causing issues such as back pain, neck pain, headaches, deep grooves from the bra straps, moisture that develops under the folds of the breast, and they're coming in really from relief of those symptoms. We treat those just like any cosmetic surgery, but sometimes the insurance will cover the cost of that surgery to relieve those symptoms. And what it is is removing excess breast tissue and performing a breast lift at the same time to give the patient a more youthful look mm -hmm. and at the same time relieve your symptoms by taking away the weight of that extra mass. Okay. Now, what would be the breast augmentation? So breast augmentation would be the opposite. So a patient who comes in and she feels that she doesn't have large enough breasts, um, sometimes it's a very straightforward procedure where we put an implant in and we have a lot of, as you can see, a wide variety of implants we can use. Sometimes it means putting an implant and doing a lift at the same time. So it really depends on what the patient needs. Okay, well, I, you do have a couple of different um, samples here. So I'm holding a, a natural, uh, looks like it's smooth, and one that's a bit rough going. So what's the difference between these two? So what you're holding in your hands, they are both gel implants. This is the Generation 4 implant, this is the Generation 5. Slight differences between the two, they're both gel. If I were to take a scissor and cut this one in half, it's not going to run all over the floor. It's it got very, it's, it's not... It's like jello. Exactly. Okay. It stays together. This one even more so, you can feel it, it's a little bit thicker. Yes. If I were to cut this in half, it actually, you can see that, that definite line between the two. It's built like a gummy bear. This is that gummy bear implant that you're hearing talked about in the news today. The different textures, this one's a smooth, this one has a texture to it. If you look at the side profile, one of them looks like an actual breast shape. It's shaped in a teardrop. The texture acts to keep it positioned on the chest so that we don't have problems with the rotation. Right, yeah, so this doesn't end up at the top. That doesn't end up at the top or the side. That looks a little bit awkward. Whereas the round doesn't matter. If it turns within the body, it maintains the same shape. Now, if, since this has a more natural look, would you think this, is this the obvious choice? Well, I think that what I find, I use a lot of the, the gummy bear, the implant you're holding now, for reconstruction patients. So we probably use it in about 80% of our, our patients and they really get a very nice uh, look after reconstruction. In cosmetic surgery, I would say it's not as uh, a big part of our practice. Um, most people these days are still using the traditional round implant. So, it, but it really depends on what is the appearance that the person is trying to achieve. So for somebody who comes in and says, I want the most natural look I can possibly get with a very smooth transition where there's no roundness at all that people typically associate with implants, then you might go to the shaped implant. For most people, though, uh, we end up the, the round implant generally tends to be a really good choice. Why is that? Well, it's been around for a long time, uh, and most people are able to achieve a really pretty look. To, then it comes down to picking the right implant. So we can, you know, there's a lot of different techniques that we use to assess somebody to figure out what's the perfect implant. Because at the end of the day, most people are coming in. Their main concern is, how do I find that perfect implant which gives me the look that I want? And right. Dr. Gown can really talk to you about how we do that. Now, some, I'm sorry, sometimes we tend to associate, you know, the, having the nice big brown breasts for people who are, you know, kind of arm candy wives, so to say. Is it really affordable? Is it not affordable? Can it just be for the average woman, you know, goes to church on Sundays? Absolutely. It's an absolutely affordable procedure. It's very safe. It's very quick. There's quick recovery. And nowadays we have the advantage of an entire slew of different devices that are customized to each individual patient. In the past, we used to have three choices for breast augmentation, small, medium, large. Now, we measure base diameter, we measure how much projection the woman wants, and we use a lot of 
trying on the implants with sizing bras, and now 3D technology as well, where we take a picture of the patient, mm -hmm. we rotate that in three-dimensional space on the computer, and we have every different style, shape, size, variety of implant, and you can preview what you're going to look like with different sized implants. Wow. And this is an extremely powerful tool, and that oftentimes guides the choice of, do you want an overly augmented look? Do you want a more softer, natural look? Do you want to maintain a sporty look? Or do you want to go very large in size? So would you say for, in terms of health and aesthetics, is there a perfect size? I don't a think cup. It, How about, is there a perfect cup? You know, it's interesting. I think that in, as it relates to, to health, I don't think so. I think that the, a different size makes sense for different builds and for different desires. So like Dr. Gowan was saying, there's some people who want a very athletic look. They don't want to be overly large. They want to be able to participate in sports without their breast implants hindering them. For other people, maybe they're not as active. They're, they're, they, they do something else with their lives where they want more attention. They want a, a larger size. The size isn't really going to impact the health. It's really more of an issue of trying to pick the right size to deliver the goal for that particular patient. What would be the um, average recovery time for augmentation? I've had patients who've gone out dancing by the end of the week and some that are still a little bit sore by the end of week two. But again, it's not something that's going to take you out of your life to where you have to take weeks and weeks off of work before going back and enjoying the activities you like most. Okay, well thank you Dr. Gowan, thank you Dr. West. If you like more information, please check out their website at finesseplasticsurgery.com. We'll be back with Everyday Fitness. Coming up next, more Everyway Woman. We're heading into a commercial break, and our fitness expert, Jeanette, wants to make sure you're not just going to be sitting there. So, Jeanette, tell us, what are some of the things we can be doing during a commercial to be productive? Well, commercial break is an awesome time to just get in a little bit of stretching. Flexibility is one of the three main components of fitness, right? There's strength, and there's cardiovascular, and there's flexibility. And you don't even have to break a sweat. You can just do I a little... I love hearing that. <laughs> so tell me what I have to do. Really? I mean, stretching is very easy. Um, you have some chairs here. Chairs are great tools to help you stretch. So we can just stand up. You can put the seat of your chair next to mine. And we can just do use like a regular kitchen chair. Any kind of chair. And in your case, you might, well, like if it's an easy chair, you might want to move around it, right? But this is your ballet bar right now. So you just take one foot, you put it back. Okay. You push that heel into the floor. And you have the weight equally over the front and the back leg. And this front leg, you don't want it to be more than 90 degrees. So think of a square. You don't want to be past 90, just a square, right? Okay, I'm going to make sure of that. Now, am I keeping my back leg straight, or what am I doing? You want to keep it somewhat straight, but not locked. You don't want to hyperextend it. So just a little tiny bit of a bend in there, and you just breathe. You really want to breathe the whole time you're stretching. I usually do try to breathe, but that's is there good. a method to the madness? I mean, do I have to make sure? it's in through the nose or out through the mouth not for stretching honestly you just have to get enough oxygen to your brain so you don't fall over that's what we're aiming for here. Okay. <laughs> so then you can just take that back leg and you can scoot that pelvis like Elvis pelvis right here just like, oh, <laughs> bring it right on there. in and you stretch in this whole hip flexor area here. I feel it. You feel it? Yeah, I do. Most of us have very tight hip flexors, especially if we watch a lot of television. That's something that gets really stiff. I could use mine to be a little tighter, if you know what I mean, but uh, we'll stretch it out. <laughs> no, you want your muscles to be straight okay. tighter, not your joints, okay. right? Good point. And then you can lean on that back foot and bring this toe up and stick that booty out, right? Mm -hmm. Keep both knees soft. You're going to stretch your hamstring, this country ham right here. All right, so the front leg is also, it's, it's not straight. It's you're not completely it? straight. You want those knees soft because when your knees are locked, that's hyperextending it. And that's like if you took a book and you opened it all the way up, you know how it damages well, the good spine? Thing. Yeah, it's a good way to think of it. It's the same thing with your knees. Okay. And how long am I holding this? You hold these stretches for like 10 to 15 seconds. You really want to go down into a stretch and just hold it. You don't want to bounce or push into a stretch because then the momentum can push your body past where your body really wants to go. Okay. So why is it so important for us to be doing stretches versus, you know, during the commercial break? I mean, you think, okay, I should be like doing some push-ups or sit-ups or... You can do that too. Um, I think most people tend to ignore the flexibility part of their training. And that's why it's so important to get stretching in when you can. 
you take the arm out to the side. I'm gonna do this side. Yeah, that's okay. probably better. <laughs> and bring it in, come underneath and hold. And there's, you can do these stretches anywhere you know, in the office. Well, that's a great point because I mean, you know, everyone should stop maybe like, you know, every hour to do something like this, right? right? It really can help your brain. And it, oh, here's a great stretch you can do in the office, right? So you move up to the front of the chair, tatas up, tatas are up, lots tatas is loaded, out. <laughs> tatas down, they're down, and then just roll back. Now you can do this without tatas too, right? Right. You do, <laughs> this is the tatas optional exercise okay, okay. and up and the great thing about doing flexibility training is like crossfit is awesome but you probably don't want to do it in your cubicle because your co-workers are going to think that you're like Ooh. <laughs> so stretching is something that you can do that's gentle and somewhat inconspicuous <laughs> I'm, I'm just sitting here not doing much but like right here like you're really rolling your back right yeah okay and most of us have a lot of stiffness in the back and another way you can do that is to just lift up I'm just like a cat, right? Just like a cat. Uh, and a cat I wish I could be my cat all day long. Oh, I know. <laughs> Cats don't have to do anything. Cats got the flexibility thing down, now, right? Now, you know, with the stretching, what I do wonder, though, because they tell you so much that you should warm up beforehand um, before you do stretching. Is that true? You can get a little this? bit of walking around, but stretching, if you do it gently, you can do it cold. It's okay. Okay. And is this um, a lot different from yoga, or is it, are these yoga moves? Some of these moves are integrated into yoga. Yoga is a very rich and complex set of exercises that has flexibility as part of it, but yoga is a lot more involved than basic stretching. Okay, so um, what about, um, you know, I mean, are you going to be doing anything with your legs and things like that as you well, can, too? You can, for example, you could just put this heel down and you could just reach on over and you should feel a stretch all the way up the I back do. of your that leg. That does yeah. feel so good. Okay. And this is something that you can do. And really, just anything that gets your body moving All right. is going to get your brain up. Well, unstuck. we are heading into a commercial, so I hope you're going to be getting your body moving. You have all the right moves. Get to it. <laughs> That's it. What else should we do? <laughs> Every Way Woman gives back to the community. Go to everywaywoman.com to find out how you can match our donations of undergarments for needy kids. Thanks for getting to know Every Way Woman. This has been an Everyway Woman production. I'm an everyday woman, 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 in every way, yeah, yeah, I'm living my life, 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 living day by day, yeah, yeah, are you an everyway woman?